Here we are again, uh, Brian Mink doing another nine tabling video. I'm going to play uh, some medium stakes today, like 30s through 50s, because uh, at this time of day, I'm in uh, Europe right now, and pretty much the games aren't running at the high stakes at all that I can see. So uh, I'm going to play some medium stakes, which is nice because I haven't really done that in a video. Uh, so this will be something a little different. And it'll be another nine tabling video like last one. And let's see, 20s, 30s. Yeah, I'll play a 20. Just a quick comment on some of your comments. Uh, I definitely played, uh, after rewatching last week's video, or last month's video rather, uh, I was m much tighter than normal, and uh, I noticed it through some of your comments. Um, part of that is because I hadn't necessarily played very much uh, prior to that session. I had taken a couple weeks off for the holidays. And it seems like when I do that, I start back at a very tight uh, in a very tight style and then slowly open it, my game back up into like its normal area. So on one hand, while I don't want you guys to think that you need to be that tight, uh, at the same time, uh, there's no one perfect static way to always play. I definitely, as I've said many times before, rotate between looser and tighter styles of play. And I think it's very beneficial to do that because your opponents can't figure you out as quickly or as easily. And also, if you have certain leaks, then you may have them only for smaller periods of time since you change your style so much. Um, ideally, we'd all know the perfect way to play, and you could just play that one way the whole time, but I don't know if that even exists in reality. And so, uh, like I said, I think uh, changing styles a lot um, sort of covers the gamut a bit of certain details regarding that, regarding uh, you know how tight, how loose should you be in each spot. So I think changing it up from time to time is beneficial. Um, at the same time, I don't know if it's fair for me to be judged by my style of play. I mean, I think you guys should be, what can you learn from a video is more important than, you know, do you think I played well? Like, uh, you can still learn as much, if not more, sometimes maybe watching someone play poorly uh, than someone playing perfectly uh, and not explaining it at all. You know, so I feel like explanations and discussions should be uh, uh, more important um, than you know. Oh, why are you sh only shoving sixes plus and ace ten plus from the uh, under the gun? You know, whatever six handed or something like that. Um, and then if you're not sure, feel free to pull out SNGPT and double check me because I'm definitely not sure all the time. And uh, the other problem with that, as you all know, is that depending on what ranges you put in, that could, uh, that number, you know, whether it's plus EV or minus EV, could easily change and will change just based on uh, what ranges you decide to put for everybody. Once again, I'm using the same software I used uh, last time with uh, Full Tilt Shortcuts and um, this uh, table organizer software that I've had for a while, this thing. Um, I will not be using SharkScope anymore. I don't condone the usage of SharkScope. <laughs> uh, apparently somebody got very upset about it, emailed Full Tilt and tried to get me banned from Full Tilt. Of course Full Tilt isn't that crazy to ban someone over using something that everyone uses that is only lightly against the terms of service but obviously it shouldn't be a part of uh, these types of videos so uh, thank you very much for telling on me appreciate it um... let's see thirty ten twenty i actually haven't played on full tilt since the last video I made, uh, for the last two months I've been playing on uh, this Italian site called Gioco Digitale, or Gioco Digitale actually. Um, it's only for Italians. You have to live here, and you have to have like like a tax code, an Italian code that you know you can't receive without living here. And uh, there are definitely a lot more bad players, and the fish are definitely a lot worse there than they are the average fish is on on some of these sites. But surprisingly, I found a ridiculous number of regs playing uh, 
all day, every day, you know, um, uh, 10, 12 tabling, and while they may not be as good as the regs on these sites, and they're not, there's still just flat out too many of them, and the whole, they also have a maximum 100 euro buy-in, uh, all in all, I'm not, I'm not all that happy with the site, I'm gonna be coming back to full tilt soon, I believe, full time, I'm gonna go ahead and see bet on table 3, uh, I've been see betting more lately, whereas I used to see bet much less, but this is a heads up pot, he limped the button, which means he could have just about anything, and uh, this is a pretty good flop, I feel like, to see bet, con considering it's so uncoordinated, and uh, uh, he quickly raises me 3x, so I have to give up. I have no reads on him, as I probably won't have reads on many of these players, since these are stakes I haven't played in a couple of years. I'm gonna go ahead and start Poker Tracker just so I can get some uh, get some HUD stats going. That's another thing about Joko Digitale: no HUD stats available, and uh, the software is kind of crappy. Uh, there's too many rags. You can't play higher than hundreds. I'm 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 about fed up with it. I'm just gonna finish out like maybe a thousand games just to just to see what an approximate ROI would be uh, over there compared to here. But um, honestly, I'm itching to get back to full tilt and get back to high stakes, sit and goes. So, enough blabbing. Let's get started with some real poker. How many more do I need? Three more games. And the twenties load up so fast I can't even I can't even sign up for one before they're they're already filled up. Okay, Pimpin Donks is a guy I knew from the old days, and apparently he's back to single table sit and goes. I know he's played a lot of multi table sit and goes on table one. And he's 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 pretty laggy for a sit and go player, but he's he seems to be pretty smart about it. He's definitely he's won a lot of money this year. I saw him on the overall like uh, leaderboard for for any game any stake and that's it's pretty impressive as much as I hate to give other people credit for anything uh, um, I, I should probably know better than to limp into him from the small blind because he is that type of guy who will probably just 3x anything just to play position and and uh, take, try to take advantage of me for playing so weakly However, um, you know, I'm distracted between the tables and the video and the th and registering, so I wasn't, uh, I didn't even realize that was him in the big blind. Most players don't do that. I would say it's a very small uh, minority of people that actually like um, are that aggressive from the big blind in the early stages. But uh, there are definitely is that style of player. It's kind of an almost a more MTT kind of style, a little laggier, a little more uh, focus on position. I'm going to go ahead and 3-bet this this guy because of his stack size. There's no reason for me to flat and be afraid to get it in. With his stack size, I'm happy to get it in. Uh, sorry, table 5, I'm happy to get it in uh, versus McCat uh, preflop. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to get it in. Call and queen 4 in the small blind. I'm just going to fold. And he has kings, which is pretty unlucky. And that's pretty lucky that I... Um, hit my queen. I'm gonna C bet my king king here uh, with the ace high flop simply because I raised pre and I could easily have an ace in his eyes. Um, ace nine on the button table two. I'm gonna raise. Now I'm gonna give up basically. I'm check folding at this point. He he called very quickly. He he may have just a weak ace and not be really wanting to have a big pot either. But obviously uh, he's not folding, so I'm not gonna keep spewing chips at him. Snoogbert. 90 chips on table 7. I'm going to go ahead and call uh, for set mining odds. Uh, it's about the largest bet I'll, I'll want to call f for that situation. Okay, I'm going to see bet on table 2. And I'm going to fold on table f 6 with my kings. And I raised out of position over there with... Uh, pocket with ace-king on table four and I don't 
No, if I should see bet this flop, oof, because that's not a pretty flop at all for me. Pocket threes, no thanks. Nobody's folding to any of my C bets right now. I'm going to call ace queen on table five, and I'm going to fold pocket threes. And I just uh, timed out on table four, and that is a beautiful flop on table five. And I'm going to check behind on this turn on table two. And I don't know if I can continue with Dan O'Toole. I have him on a, a like on a he might be a good player color color rating. I'm just gonna flat call table five rather than check raise and maybe just check raise the turn. Folding table two as he was trying to trap me. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna dump table four because I don't like my position there at all. Okay, so I probably misplayed this hand on table five, is the most likely thing. I think the, I think the preflop call is perfectly standard and normal. Um, I think you could argue for check raising the flop. I don't think leading the flop makes any sense, but check raising the flop or calling and then betting the turn might have been better against this guy. I'm also kind of just saying that though based on results, so that's kind of uh, worth mentioning. Do I have enough tables up? I don't even know yet. Let's do one more, 55 plus 5. And that'll be 9 tables. Okay, table 3, checking from the big blind. Uh, really no reason to, to do anything other than that. Table 4, uh, A7 is not good enough, especially with limpers involved. If no one had limped, if I was opening, I'd, I could probably open the button there for 150. Now, I flop top pair, but it's very weak kicker. And I'm more going to be in check call, check fold mode, depending on bet sizing and depending on who makes the bet. With four players in the hand, it's it's not uh, it's not a it's not a very good situation. Okay, with everyone checking through, I feel much better about my position, and I'm going to bet 75. I'm not trying to invest a lot into this hand, and I'm not trying to make a bet where only better hands can call me. I would rather make a bet where I can get called by kings and pocket pairs and things. 150 from this guy. I'm going to go ahead and repop him to 400 with pocket queens, table 5. Um, pocket 7s, I'm going to limp for 40 on table 7. Back to table 3. I'll do another 100. Same same reasoning, same logic as as the turn. Since the uh, river looks to have been a blank outside of some absurdly retarded gut shot straight draws that the guy might have not been on since he folded. Or did he, uh, excuse me, did he fold or did he call? He folded. Pocket fours now. Now, 50 is no longer, is a little too much, I think. Even this pocket uh, sevens for 40 chips is pushing it, but sevens is a little higher than, you know, some of the smallest of small pairs, so I went ahead and limped it for set value. But pocket fours, I think, is too low. Sure, I have a double stack, but these other guys don't. And as far as implied odds goes, it's what's important is effective stacks, not just your stack. So... King Jack, middle position, no thank you. Pocket sevens, I'm just check folding, especially with all those overcards. Um, Ace Jack, believe it or not, I'm folding. Uh, at a position in a multi-way pot is not is not uh, with Ace Jack offsuit is not uh, how you make money early in sit and goes. Pocket sevens, even only for 40 chips, I'm letting it go. I mean, everything about this board is is the opposite of what I want it to be. So I'm just gonna take the 40 chip loss and move on with my life. King 9, table 4, no no reason to even consider it. Ace 4 suited, table 1, no thank you. We're starting to get into some mid-game play up top. We've got a lot of 20 big blind stacks. Here's another good uh, situation where I could say this is, this is a clear fold to me now, which is 50 50 uh, chips under the gun, uh, pocket fives on table six. Um, not, it's not necessarily that 50 is alone is too much. If I knew no one was raising behind me, then then I'd probably go for it every time. But uh, you know, people do raise behind a lot, and uh, it's uh, you, without even getting to see a flop and spending 50 is is really quite a tragedy. 
With 12 bigs on the button, I'm actually just going to shove table 2. I have an awkward size stack to against ace jack on table 8. I've been meaning to fold from the beginning. He raised 4x, which is a little bit awkward. And if I can't shove there, I'm not comfortable playing the hand because the pot's going to be like 3-400 on the flop. And I'm not willing to just give up the two-thirds of the times that I miss. And he C bets. So I'd rather only play that hand uh, if I'm stronger or can shove pre, which we are a little too deep to do. Or a lot too deep to do, perhaps. Okay, there's only a min raise on table 9, but I'm not going to call it. Uh, even if it's only 30 chips, there's no reason for me to play stupid 4 or 5 offsuit. Um, pot odds are not everything, um, they are less, they're more deceiving and less important, I think, in, in tournament play because of the quote-unquote bubble factor and the, the way that chips won are worth less than chips lost. You basically need more odds than normal to make a given play worth it that would have been worth it in a cash game. <coughs> so pot odds alone, don't let it lure you too, in too far. Ace jack in the small blind. I'm, I'm simply calling. I don't want to raise and play another pot out of position with another hand that's going to miss two thirds of the time, and have to guess with my stack and bet half my stack and then fold when someone raises me. And I'm obviously beat all in the beginning of a tournament when that's when this is really when we're supposed to be preserving our chips. I if I had some HUD stats on this guy and he was loose, I would shove here. But I don't have any HUD stats on him, so I'm just going to fold uh, on table three. Fold pocket twos. I'm gonna shove ace queen though because I think I feel like that's that's my cutoff. I feel like that's just strong enough now once you get to the ace queen world uh, to three bet. Um, although now I'm looking at it, he actually just raised a little over three x. Uh, I thought that was just like a two point five x raise, but I didn't realize. I thought the big one was eighty. Not a huge difference, but uh, ace queen is usually safe enough uh, to reshove. Um, assuming the original raise <clears throat> is, you know, a decent chunk of your stack. If it's like level one and it's just 90 chips, then no, it's, it's too early to three bet shove. Ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so I do my little favorite thing where I always min bet the flop and this guy's having none of it. Uh, perhaps he's seen my videos and knows that I do that all the time. Perhaps he hasn't. Which is fine. If everybody starts doing that, uh, if every you know, if, if a lot of people did watch my videos and uh, that I played against and 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 made a point to like raise all of my min flop bets, like it probably wouldn't take me but a couple days to to know who who was and who wasn't. And and if anything, I prefer them to do that because because knowing what they know that about me is a, is a, is also an advantage for me. So um, if that's what happens in the in, in the coming months when I return to full tilt, then that's fine. Fortunately or unfortunately, most people probably won't see the, my videos. Um, most of the opponents I'll play against, so may not be that big of a factor. Queen five under the gun, no thank you. King four suited, no thank you. Okay, here's a spot where with 14 big blinds, I believe this is unexploitable. It's something I studied back in the day, learned from Bean Mo. And uh, since this guy's aggro and limping would make, we already know what happens when you limp into pimp and donks. Uh, he's going to raise so wide, and he's he's tough to play against post flop out of position. Uh, so it just makes tons of sense for all those reasons to be uh, shoving there. Here, ace nine, I had like ten, ten and a half big blinds, completely standard shove, completely. Uh, I mean, he wakes up with ace ten, good for him. What can I do? Nothing. Uh, I luck out and make a retarded straight. Fine, it happens. But I think as far as that goes, uh, that's an inevitable uh, way the hand would have turned out. He played it fine, obviously, snap calling me. Okay, I'm going to min bet table three, because that's what I love to do, blind versus blind. Uh, and this time it finally worked, thank God. Ace five with twelve bigs is not gonna not gonna be enough. Okay, so here I actually flop top pair against a limper 
from late position, which is really weird. So I'm going to consider check calling. I'm not going to just bet out. I don't know. I play these really weak tight, as you uh, have probably noticed by now. Like I'm already thinking about folding this hand. I know you guys are going to kill me. You're too tight, Sam, or what's your, what's your problem? My problem is, what's the upside for me here? What am I going to gain from this? A couple of chips, and what is the downside? Lose a lot of chips. Because if I was to, if I'm right and I have the best hand, I'm not going to probably get any more chips out of any more streets. If I'm wrong, I'm probably going to have to call a bet on the turn also, and a bet on the river, and, you know, uh, or make bets, which is just as dangerous if I'm wrong. Uh, and so I just feel like it's a lot more to lose than to gain. And for what? I have a I have a good stack. Why play such marginal spots? Why why risk you know big chunks of your tournament on something so marginal when there's going to be future hands where you have way more clear obvious plus EV situations. Straight up Skolansky type stuff right there. Here I'm going to fold. Uh, it's close against a regular, and then I think against uh, a non-regular, which I'm, I think this guy is, but I actually have no clue now that I think about it. Uh, I always consider fish, that shove, uh, to be on very strong uh, ranges, very tight ranges. Okay, so I'm not going to shove 3-7 off into this guy. He's got 11 bigs, I've got 12. Um, I shoved last time with 14. 3-7 um, is just the, pff, about as bad as it gets, so I feel pretty confident, pretty safe, just... Um, uh, folding. Now here's an interesting spot where I'm actually going to play a little pot here with this guy that I just uh, folded to in position with pocket fives. I'm not quite getting set odds uh, to make that call because um, I doubt I would be able to stack him that often, but I'm in position so I can win this hand in plenty of ways other than just uh, hitting a set, although that would be the most ideal way. But with position, with a decent hand I mean, if he pulls a check raise here after raising preflop, I would I would be shocked. Um, I know it happens sometimes from the weirdest fish, but uh, that's that's kind of a situation where you don't ha I don't have a lot of those spots in sit and goes where you're just where you're in position and you feel like you can uh, uh, take advantage of that, as well as having uh, the set value on occasion. But the combination of the set value plus the positional, you know, advantage of playing post flop with double stacks, it makes it worth it to me. Ace ten offsuit out of position, no thank you. Jacks easy call. Five six nope. Table seven no thank you. Oh Snoogbert, how I don't know what to do with you. These are spots that I'm never comfortable with. I have a complete trash hand and I have a completely short stack guy who should be probably is going to just call me with anything, so I just let it go. I mean, I feel like this is that that hand there on table six is a situation where, if he ever folds to my shove, then it's worth it, you know. Uh, but it's so hard to know. Most regulars would never fold because they're not they they understand that you're on any two probably, and that the pot, they have little pot odds there with already having 150 chips in the pot. Uh, I'm gonna raise 250 here and call Snoogbert. You know, I'll get it all in with Snoogbert and not with Pimpin' Donks. Okay, suited gapper shoved for about eight big blinds, and I have nines on the button. So with eight big blinds, I can see him pushing a lot of pairs lower than nines, and maybe even some aces lower than nines. I feel like I'm nines are just strong enough. King seven, table one, I'm going to go ahead and shove, although I'm not super thrilled with how long it took me to shove. I think that makes me look a lot weaker which makes him more likely to call, and he did call with the lovely 10-9, which is hilarious. Okay, so what happened here? Uh, I missed it, I missed it. Uh, okay, ace-jack. Uh, that's pretty standard. Uh, I'm sure you're all laughing at me for even considering folding. I wasn't really considering folding, but it is worth analyzing, I believe, a little bit to, 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 to think about... Um, I'm going to go ahead and shove on Pimp and Donks. I'm going to reshove on this guy. Ace Jack suited it's, is pretty damn strong, as well as the fact that uh, that guy, Hobo Joe's, has been donking around a lot so far. A limp in the button earlier, min raising the button now, and, you know, uh, what, what did he do last time? He raised, I called, and he didn't see bet. Um, 
I'm not saying you always have to see bat. I'm just saying he didn't see bat. Oh, what happened here? I just lost uh, Jack Seven. I got called by what? A six. That's a standard call. I'm very curious to know like ranges of calling shoving from Pimp and Donk since he's been apparently like he disappeared for a year or so and now he's been playing a lot more and winning a lot so I'll be keeping my eyes open to see <clears throat> if I can learn anything about his style Queen Jack from the cutoff for 8.3 big blinds is a little too weak for me mainly because I just shoved what one two three hands in a row yeah so my credits going down quick um, and their ranges are opening up quick. King 7 I shoved, Jack 7 I shoved and showed, and King 7 was showed, and then Queen Jack I shoved and no one called, and then Queen Jack again from the cutoff. So, I mean, getting in further worse positions and then uh, shoving again with a marginal hand is, is really not a good idea because you can go plug that into SNG Wiz and put them all on pretty tight ranges and show me, wow, looks at, you know, that's a bad fold, but in reality they're not on tight ranges after I've shoved three straight hands. Okay, Hobo Joe's, he just doesn't quit fooling around. I'm just gonna raise 3x. Normally I raise 2.5, so with this limp roll I raise 3, because Obviously, I'm trying to invite some action here with kings. I'd love for, I'd love to get re-raised or called, but uh, he's not calling. McBurge sounds familiar, like maybe he's a regular. Uh, Eleven big blinds. Um, don't know what he's shoving there, but uh, my what did I have? Ace two. Yeah, ace three. It's not, it's not even close, so not a problem. Uh, ace ten suited. Super easy standard. Fist pump shove, uh, middle position with seven big blinds. Pocket jacks on table seven, standard 2.5x raise. Jack seven offsuit, I'm going to fold from the small blind. Don't want to play against that many players. Shove from the small blind table two. And I'm going to shove table five with sevens, especially with this guy's HUD stats of being so crazy. Makes me even more confident. So my ace ten ran into the monster pocket twos and uh, could not uh, hold up. I'm gonna go ahead and go with my queen nine. Oof! I just got min raised. I just got min re raised on table seven with my jacks. That's really ugly, really ugly, really ugly. A goozy. Time, 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 time. Okay, call with aces. Blah blah blah. I'll shove a seven in a second. Oh god, I'm just gonna get this in and then I'm gonna make it into a learning experience because I, I really think he has aces. <laughs> okay, so this is how you don't play poker. You don't have a feeling, well, it's not about feelings. You don't have, you know, reads and uh, certain spots like that where you just can't let go. It's not It's not good. Um, honestly, to be completely honest with you, because honesty is my favorite thing in the world, I do that a lot. I do that, it greatly depends on my mood. If I'm tilting, I'm always doing that. If I'm not, I'm usually folding. If I'm distracted or confused, then it could go either way. Like, I almost timed out there to begin with. But, uh, I, me only I only had a thousand chips at that point, so I felt like it was it's less of a mistake to uh to have that happen when than having a full stack or a double stack with a double stack, I would never have considered that I would definitely just call pre flop and then hopefully be able to get away from it after that but um the reality is that uh even the pl players that win a lot uh make mistakes um and I kind—I of, mean, I want to act like I just did that, just to like show you what it looks like when someone min re raises. They almost always have aces, but at these lower stakes, uh, that's not always true. I find people min raising with crap too. So there's there's no super standard way to know. I mean, you have to know the players, which I don't know at all at this level. Okay, I'm not going to call with queen jack. It just doesn't play that well as a calling hand. I'm going to shove this button mainly because of the stacks here. We've got a big stack already folded, a, a medium stack, and then the two small stacks are me and suited gapper. So I have to attack suited gapper. 
I'm actually somewhat okay with him calling because uh, for me to double up through him is much more valuable than to double up through anyone else. And uh, I only had four big blinds. It's not like I was making some sort of a ten big blind shove with trash. Um, let's see, ace eight with seven bigs. Uh, this is an easy shove. I'm just not getting anything going right now. Queen Jack suited under the gun. No reason to get too far out of hand here. So this is the same. What the hell is Full Tilt doing? This is the same hand. This is the same table where I lost Ace Ten. Yeah, and my Queen Nine magically did not get called pre-flop, which is bizarre because I had like 1.5 big blinds. And then I shoved Ten Nine under the gun since I was gonna. It was my last chance to have any fold equity. And at least I wasn't dominated. I mean, I had a fair chance to to double or or triple up actually. So, uh, if anything, that was actually maybe a good spot to get my money in, to triple up, you know, uh, just hitting, uh, I could have just hit a pair. Okay, queen on under the gun, easy fold, ace queen, easy call. This guy is very tight, though, and I've never heard of him, so I'm not, I'm not thrilled to, uh, to see that, but he, maybe he is a reg. I, uh, I don't play the 20s anymore, so I don't know. He hits his seven, and I'm out. This tournament's going, this whole session's going way too fast. Whoops. Where's the button that tells you how long it's been going? Okay, this one I'll go ahead and shove, but rather than shove my whole stack and I'm just going to do a normal size bet that puts them all in. That way I don't look like I'm one of those shove crazy maniacs that, that the fish uh, love to uh, get mad at and spike call like crazy. Maybe it's this one. Ah, there we are. Um, I'm going to shove here. We're on the bubble now, and this guy's so short that the uh, big blind should have to uh, be much tighter than normal. Now, I'm not going to shove here because I'm not, th I'm not the biggest stack. I probably would if I wasn't, but I'll go ahead and make a normal raise. I don't think any anyone here is going to play like aggressive enough to to uh to make this this uh unprofitable. I definitely don't want to play a hand with him, but at least I'm in position and he should be equally as un unexcited to play with me. So here's a, here's a here's a fish shoving over 10 big blinds, which I always say I don't like to call fish shove, but ace queen is is too strong to fold, obviously. Um but in general, he's not, I mean he's never going to show up with like trash, you know, ever, so, um, but he will, uh, spike a king, and, uh, take all of my chips. Queen five, no thanks, four five, oof, this is brutal right here. I'm actually just gonna fold. I don't see any, any damn value in, 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 in shoving that. It's, it's just like the four six hand we had earlier. Um, there's no, there's no uh, benefit there for me to uh, show people how I, you know, will shove very wide to have a hand where it's clearly going to be a showdown with no fold equity against the short stack. It's just kind of just it sucks because you don't have a choice. Let me close my table organizer so I can enlarge these tables for you, so we can see what's going on. Under the gun, ace queen. I'm gonna do like I did with ace eights offsuit and make it 600. Uh, five big blinds with king five. I'm actually gonna go ahead and shove. I'd rather. I feel a lot safer from the cutoff with this shove, but uh, it has to be calling me relatively wide for that to be bad. Excellent. Ace queen versus ace queen. Let's hit us a flush. No, it's too late. No more flushes. Looks like Tool Time Granny is really tight for 
um, you know, being a big stack on the bubble, he's not going to bully the bubble, um, <clears throat> which is awesome for me. And this is a perfect situation where it's good to keep that in mind. I was just going to say, when he does make a big bet or a, or a raise or something, not, don't, you know, my first instinct is to treat him like, give him no credit and treat him just like every other big stack on every other bubble that are la loose, crazy assholes. But this guy is different. Uh, at least he's so proven so far. I mean, he could have just changed gears at this exact moment, but definitely you have to remember to give someone more credit when they have been that tight as the big, uh, as the big stack. And he did have ace eight, so you know that's a reasonable, reasonably good hand, especially on the button. Nothing, uh, there's nothing laggy about that. So this looks like a pretty easy shove, very easy shove, with ace nine. We're on the bubble there on, on table three now. We're on our last limb here on table two, but we have uh, doing the best we can to stay alive. I'm going to go ahead and throw in a raise here, just because I feel like these players are too tight shorthanded. Um, I was hoping he would prove me wrong instantly and make me look like an idiot. Um, but nonetheless, he has been very tight. I haven't seen him raise but one hand in the last 15 or so, and I haven't... Uh, seen him three bet anything. So I'm pretty confident he's on a strong uh on a strong uh hand here. So it's just you could actually just say that's bad luck for us. A six on table two is a standard shove. Four big blinds cut off. Blah blah blah. Okay, to shove or to oof, this is a I'm gonna shove table three for sure. And I'm going to go ahead and shove this one, too, because I, I don't like this guy's attitude anymore. Uh, he's, he's, he has officially, in my mind, started to open his game up. And, and min raises are maybe my biggest pet peeve in the history of pet peeves. Table 3 is a little sketchy because we're, all, because we're on the bubble. But seeing that the limper was 34-20 uh, made me much more uh, happy to... Uh, um, to make that shove, and then of course the big blind's on any two because he hasn't even acted yet. Four or five off, I'm going to let it pass because, uh, let's see, I shoved on him last orbit, and then I just reshoved on the other guy, and and that's just the bottom, bottom of the bottom of all bottom ranges, so, uh, you know, I like to fold those bottom 10-15%. 10, 10, so we won that A6 hand, which is beautiful, because we're not winning many hands today. And now I've picked up kings, and we're going to get a tiny bit of action from a short stack. And he has queens. Sucks for him. And we hold up. Fish shoving the button. Once again, like you guys know, I, I assume he's on he's on a tighter range than, than the average reg, but uh, it's not always true. There's definitely exceptions. And uh, I really don't know if he's one of those exceptions. I'm going to fold this. Um, I'm too deep to shove. He's also bigger stacked than me. The the, the one that I want to attack is Jesseg43, so, so I don't see any reason to really to do anything with this hand. Now that I've taken so long to think about this, I'm afraid to really see bet. Uh, also, not only am I... Not only did I take too long, but it this guy is definitely and i'm not even sure why i'm thinking this but i know i know that he would be trapping me on that flop every time he hit he would never lead out um uh and i feel like even pre-flop it almost felt like he was already envisioning his check raise that he was going to pull and now i don't have a choice but to fold with that kind of a bet size i was hoping he bet smaller and then i would at least maybe be able to make a call or 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 I don't know, if I was to shove over a smaller bet, that would really just turn my hand completely into a bluff, which is not the worst idea necessarily, but I just had a very, very strong feeling this that hand with Tool Time Granny that he's just waiting to trap me. Okay, so I haven't shoved every orbit, so I'm going to shove this orbit. I mean, I feel like my image has to tighten up a little bit in his eyes, um, at least to where he knows I'm not shoving any two cards. Uh, and... As silly as it sounds, 9-3 is a decent bit stronger than 4-5. Um, not much. 
to be completely honest, but uh, it's uh, mostly my image there that I feel makes me uh, that shove very easy. Okay, this is these are some really really good spots on table three. Um, maybe I'll after this game's over, I'll pull out SNGPT and, and study this one nine eight seven zero. Um, pocket threes no. Uh, so king three, I'm gonna fold, but I'm not positive. I think it's close, and I think I know it depends on the calling ranges. But here's here's something el another like factor about bubbles that I think people don't think about. I mean, I don't think about it enough. Uh, Ace four is definitely a fold. Um, is that the longer the bubble goes on, the, the antsier everyone gets. People get a little antsier, and people have seen the sho the amount of time that shoving is going on is increased, and people's ranges are slowly but surely widening. Their call ranges, that is, and maybe their shove ranges as well. But their call ranges definitely get looser and looser. Very, you know, each hand of the bubble, in my, on more often than not. Um, I'm going to just call here. I would like to min raise, but I can see him re-stealing. I feel like this guy's very aggro, and I kind of just want to play some pots with him. Kind of just want to hang in there and, and mess around with him for a little bit. So six, seven, I'm going to shove. Although I'm not, I'm not super happy with. The, I'm not super excited about my position there, uh, since he's the only player at the table. I think it's going to. Who knows uh, what a good calling range is there. Queen town on the button. I'm going to go ahead and shove. I feel like it's better than the king three that I had last time, and uh, we're gonna go th we're gonna go through these since this video is, seems to be a little shorter than I want it to be. On table two, I'm gonna wait. I would like to shove any two here, but because of my stack size, but it's the big stack and the big blind, and I want to attack this guy, not that guy. I want to attack the guy to my right since he's uh, and I can't attack him with 6-4. It's just too damn weak. Um, so hopefully someone they don't give him a walk. If they give him a walk, I might shoot myself. I'm actually just going to shove here. I don't always shove any two cards a heads up in this type of spot at all, but this guy isn't a math guy. He's not an SNG whiz guy. He's not. He doesn't know what the hell's going on. He is quite aggro and, and somewhat tricky, uh, but he's not going to be probably calling me enough, uh, most likely. Uh, for any two cards to be a bad shove there. And this is a nightmare. This is my internet has just gone out. I'm going to connect to my VZ Access Manager and it better hurry the hell up because I'm on three freaking bubbles. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! That's the worst when your head's up. Oh good, they gave me my disconnect, uh, my full disconnect protection time. These are all easy folds. Uh, this guy must have a hand. Whoa, queen five, five nine, what the hell's going on? Actually his shove is fine since I have to fold, and then his call is actually not that bad since he has such good pot odds. I'm just going to min raise the guy this time. I don't think he calls enough, and I haven't shoved enough on table one for him to really see how, how loose I'm shoving. He probably, he might still think I'm shoving... Um, somewhat tight. I really don't know, so I feel like I was hoping I would have more chances at a re-steal with a, uh, a min-raise than I would have at him calling me, straight up calling my shove. He didn't re-steal, but he did call at least, so not that bad. 2-7, uh, I'm not going to do anything too tricky there. I'm going to go ahead and shove this. It's my last chance to have any fold equity. Pimp Doc showing under the gun with seven big blinds when we're all relatively equal stack usually means he's got a hand. He's not just going with any two. Not that, uh, not that I would have played king six anyways, but... Okay, third place, whatever. It happens. Um... He's simply just gonna like... He's just being very aggro and not gonna let me. Uh, he's not gonna let me run over him in any way. He's pretty much running over me, if, if anything. But uh, it's fine. I know. Uh, I'm just gonna play normal ICM game and then also trap him when I get the chance. If we if we do more of these limpy pots where he keeps limping in, uh, I can pretty much trap him with any top pair or second pair. If he keeps making huge overbets like that. Um.
I'm definitely not folding his hand. I'm gonna just gonna stop and go instead of instead of reshoving. Since reshoving has zero fold equity, um, I'm just gonna stop and go because I like it. I love watching them fold for no for no chips. Now he's not gonna fold for no chips, and he just had the sickest flop in the of all possible flops, and I just got the sickest like what did I have? Two outs? No, I had three jacks too. Five outs. Table th two, I don't have any choice to call. I definitely can't call. I don't think I have any fold equity here, so I'm just going to fold. If I'm wrong, then that's a mistake. If I if he is able to fold ever there, then I should have shoved, but I just, that's my guess. My guess is that I don't have any. And I'm going to call here because, like I said, I think he's on, he's lost it. I feel like he's just, he lost all of his, you know, his, his passion for life after that, uh, that last beat. I mean, that was a standard shove on my part with King-10. I mean, what did I have? Four or five big blinds. Nothing he can do. He run into a big hand. What do you want me to tell you? Poker is an evil game. So he hit an eight. That's why he's still alive. That bastard. Jack-8. Come on. Ten. <clears throat> okay, so... Whew, not able to put this guy away at all. I expect him to slow down. Gosh, as soon as I say that, I expect him to slow down once he, his stack is back to to a moderately healthy stack. Um, not going to shove two five. I need to be patient here. This is an easy time to get frustrated that he was down to a thousand chips and just doubled up like ten times in a row. Uh, you know, it's important not to get too frustrated and just wait it out because he'll make plenty more mistakes and I'll have plenty of time to. Uh, uh, like like here, like I feel like um, oof. I don't know if I should shove though. I definitely feel like I want to check raise, but I'm only gonna get called by queens. I'm just gonna check call. I'm gonna let him keep bluffing. Well, that's a miracle card if I ever saw one. I mean, I don't think check raising the flop with middle pair in this exact moment is is the right play since I feel like he's slowed down. He's not as crazy as he was a few hands ago. Um, oof. I want to check raise now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to wait. Let's bet 18, half pot. Hope he has something. He'll just put me all in if he has a queen or an ace. Whoa. Okay, so there was no, it was not meant for me to have, to win that heads up battle, apparently. <coughs> That's definitely, um, there's no question about us getting that, getting it in on that type of a, that type of a board in a heads up game with no, with no stack, so, um, perfectly fine with the way that ended. So let's let's take a look at a couple hands off of this one. Let me see how much time uh, I've used so far. 48 minutes. I feel like we could do like 10 minutes of uh, SNGPT to end off this video. And the the video is 9870. Let me see. Should be. In the Bramink file, 9870, there it is. Okay, good. I will go ahead and close that. Whoops. Um, okay. So, this skip past the early game and let's get to some shoves. Ace three versus six big blinds is not worth studying. We all know that that is way too easy of a shove. Nine six on the button. Oh, that's a calling situation. Ace three on the cutoff. Queen five, check five. Ace ten. Ace ten on the button. I had a little bit more than uh, <coughs> ten big blinds. This is this is such an easy shove. I don't know why I'm even. Uh, and there's no need to even look it up. Um little surprised that it's only plus point three, but there there is some interesting things to consider since I'm on this hand. 
One is that we're five-handed, and we're very close to the bubble. So you could almost say we're 4.5 handed. You, you know what I mean? Like when uh, this guy's so short, you can almost start to treat hands like the bubble. And at that point, Ace Ten is still a shove, but it's not this uh, as high EV as it would have been seven-handed or eight-handed with the same number of big blinds on the button. Also, other factor is the big stack and the big blind, uh, and that I'm, I am a little bit over ten bigs and things like that. So. Um, it's a little surprising to see it that uh, to see the EVB only plus 0.3 with these pretty pretty standard calling range. That might be a little loose actually. Let's see what that would be on on a slightly tighter range. 0.4. Uh, it hardly changes at all. Uh, whew, let me turn off my Verizon card since I don't need it anymore. Okay. So, but yeah, so once you think about it, and once you realize that it's almost basically R on the bubble already, uh, it makes a lot more sense with these large uh, stacks that uh, it's not like plus 0.1% or plus 1%. King 5, King 6, do 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 da da da. 9 4 in the big, no way, 10 7. Uh, definitely not calling shove at 10 7. Okay, button, uh, ace 2 suited. I think we can go back to these. Let me show hand history so I can know which player is which. Uh, in the big blind, okay, the small blind is Pimp and Donks, and the other two players are unknowns. So the small blind is Pimp and Donks. Um, he's probably going to be a little tighter, whereas the fish will be a little looser. He's more aware of the severity, I would assume, of the bubble, and that calling light is not profitable ever. Whereas the fish. If they see a hand that, that looks pretty, they'll go with it. And <clears throat> these are all pretty hands, usually. So based on this, uh, A2 suited, I'm definitely not going to shove. <clears throat> but based on this range, <clears throat> let's uh, compute all and uh, see minimum edge. Let me go ahead and put it at point 0.1. Let me go ahead, let's go ahead and see what uh, they say our shoving range should be. Twos, any pair, any ace, king eight, king two suited, queen eight, queen four suited, jack eight off, jack six suited, ten eight off, blah 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 blah. Okay, so I'm definitely shoving uh, this side of things. These for sure. Some of the queens. Once you get into some of these lower suited connectors, I mean, it's very dangerous. Um, I don't know. If you're, if, it depends how confident you are in the calling range. If you're sure they're calling that tight, um, that as we have written down here, then then definitely shove away. Problem is we're never sure, and it's always a guessing game. And whether they call that tight or not could depend on what just happened the last two hands, or it could depend on did a million other factors we don't even know about, like if someone's tilting from other tables or whatnot. So uh, there's definitely there's no way to fully know. I mean, if you do know, then go for it. Shove it. And if you think they're even tighter, you can even shove wider. But uh, usually on the bubble, I play it safe and um, uh, just go a little more conservative than, than the rest. Uh, five four suited is not even a chance under the gun. Let's let's talk about what is uh, useful under the gun. Uh, Pimp and Donks is still to our left, right? Of course. So I'll put him on a tighter range and everyone else on a looser range. That's actually even a little loose for him. Can you change that to eights? And uh, compute all once again. I expect this to be quite tight. Sixes, ace ten, ace nine suited, ace king queen suited. That looks about right to me. Um, a lot of people. Uh, don't realize uh, how tight you're supposed to shove at, in these spots, so it's definitely worth looking at. Um, D D D D D D Jack Seven. I did shove this one. This is B V B. This is pretty standard. Let's say he calls. You know, I don't think he should be calling very wide. Let's say, let's start at 30% and see what that would do. Whoa. Yeah, he's not calling that wide. 
In normal blind versus blind situations, I would say he is calling that wide, but on the bubble, that's definitely too much. Plus point one. So twenty percent is 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 where he needs to be, or he needs to be at twenty or tighter for this to be profitable. You know what, man? That does not look comforting. That looks very sketchy. I can't imagine not shoving Jack Seven off there though, with uh, you know seven point five bigs. I can't imagine folding it. So that's uh, incredibly interesting to me right now. And that's the beauty of sit and goes. As, as quote unquote solved as they are, I'm still shocked at a lot of the things I see when I look up hands. Um, King three on the button. Based on what we saw last hand, I'm going to go ahead and say this is not going to be profitable. Uh, minus 0.7 or plus 0.1. So on these ranges, plus 0.1. Oof, I don't think uh, I don't think we can we can make that shove, and we didn't, so that's fine. Ace four off. Under the gun once again. It's too it's too loose. Minus 0.8. Six four off. Do 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 do. Oh, calling situation. Not going to happen. 7-6 in the small blind. I didn't feel good about this at all. And I know after seeing the last one, I'm going to feel even worse about it. It looks like it's about the same. Plus 0.1 at 20 and minus 1 at 30. It is have the, almost the exact same, uh, oops, exact same equity as, uh, <coughs> as uh, the jack-7 shove. So those are both very close spots uh, that could probably go either way, the jack-7 and the 6-7. Uh, um, Queen-10 on the button is very close. We made the shove. It's plus 0.1 on these half-half, half-tight, half half-loose half range. So whew, I guess we can say that that's uh, acceptable. Then we have fold, fold. Fold, fold, they were shoving, we're not allowed to open, under the gun, 7-5, we can't open, king-6, we can't call, can't call, shoving this on the button, I mean, they'd have to be, even at this tightness, I don't know, yeah, if they're both mega tight, but with, with the, the factor that I was describing earlier of what I believe is people getting looser and looser with their calling ranges during the duration of the bubble, this would be a perfect example of why these ranges would say shove and these ranges are flat out wrong in my opinion. Uh, not to mention that I am shorter stacked because the blinds are bigger. Uh, but instantly, go go down one uh, uh, degree of uh, you know calling ranges and it immediately becomes minus 0.5. So the sensitivity and volatility of EV on the bubble changes so greatly with each minor, um, you know, changing any one detail that of the entire hand can change the equity calculations by so much. Okay, 9-6, under the gun, no thank you. We still had a little over six, uh, what is it, 500, yeah, a little over six, six and a half big blinds, so we're not like in desperation death mode, but although we're getting very close to it. 7-6, we're definitely not calling, and then king-10, we're definitely shoving. Let's find the break-even point for king-10, and then we can call it a day. 2.4 at 25, so this is going to be easy. Oof. It's quite a difference between shoving king-10 <coughs> and shoving jack-7. Although those aren't the only differences. The stacks are way shorter so the the amount of chips we gain when he does fold obviously went way up but apparently even if he never folds king 10 is is unexploitable uh, at at about five big blinds so that's excellent excellent to know so um that's it for this session um hopefully i uh showed you a little different side of of my gameplay rather than just my super uber nitty st uh style from last video um, also, uh, I just started a new blog on Card Runners. If y'all want to check it out, feel free to free to free to look at that. And um, I try to answer any questions I can in the uh, forums. If you uh, you know post uh, video questions or suggestions, uh, 
I, uh, I'll try to read those as, as often as I can. And uh, thanks for watching.